Well, hello everyone, and welcome down to the first episode of the Build My Bag series. So this year I have gone equipment, manufacture, sponsorship, free. Basically wanted to be a more independent voice on the technology which has come to market to give you guys a better understanding of the golf clubs and what you can expect if you want to buy them. And to that end I'm doing the Build My Bag series which is basically every compartment of my bag from driver through to putter. I'm testing out clubs, letting you know what I'm finding and then deciding what is going to be going into my bag for the 2020 season. And today is the first video because I've got the wedges that I'm going to be testing. Now the way that this is going to be working with my wedges, I'm going to be testing them here at the Quest Golf Academy. I'm going to be heading out onto the golf course to test them in a real game situation because I want to be able to measure spin rates, I want to be able to do all that, but I also want to see what they're like around the greens, in certain lies, in certain situations, in certain conditions. I'm not going to be doing that today. <laughs> Some kind of storms move through the UK today. The wedges that I've chosen, they all have different things going on with them, which I actually quite like. So first of all, the mill grind two, the big talking point there is obviously got the raw face and then a finished rest of the club head. So as the face gets wet, as it is exposed to the elements, it gets rustier and rustier, which apparently helps with dispersion of water, impact and spin and all manner of good, happy things. I've actually had the mill grind two wedges now for quite a bit of time, those black ones but I've been using the Chrome 56 one out on the golf course. So those aren't maybe as rusty as they could be, but they're starting to rust a touch. All the little bits of tech they've got in there, they've got a TPU insert in the back, which helps with vibration. They've also redistributed the CG position in the mill grind too, as opposed to the mill grind, because one thing I did find with the mill grind normal wedges last year is the actual shots on the longer pitches I wasn't quite able to control the flight as much as I would have liked. Now, that is something that certainly with the Vokies, I was really happy with when I tried those out. Now, the second wedges I've got are the Glide Forge, the Pings. Now, these are more expensive than the other wedges. They're quite a departure, really, from what Ping normally do with their clubs. They have started to introduce more forged things into their lineup, but forever, Ping were a cast company. Cast, 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 cast. I love the look of these wedges. I think they look beautiful behind the ball. They've got this tour-inspired design, but the claims that Ping make in their marketing compared to the other two brands, Ovoki and with TaylorMade, they're just so chilled. So it basically says it's forged, so it's soft. They've got a tungsten weight in there, which adds a little bit of forgiveness. It's got sharp grooves. And then that's, that's, that's about it. Um, <laughs> but I tell you what, everyone who's tried these Ping Glide wedges have said they are fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to it tonight. And last but not least, we've got the Vokies, the SM8s. I think these look absolutely beautiful. With it being all murdered out, with it being just completely stealth, it actually doesn't photograph or video that well, but in the flesh, it just looks amazing behind the ball. I think Vokey do a really good job at actually explaining what goes into their wedges. They tell the story a lot better than some of the other brands and they back it up with a really good performance. With the new SM8s, the look, the sole grinds, the CG positioning to help with pitch shots and control the trajectory, I, I think it's gonna do exactly what it says on the tip. The only concern that I've got maybe against the Vokies is just the feel. Are they gonna feel quite as nice as the other wedges on this test? So I'm gonna be testing them out. I've got a lob wedge and a gap wedge. I'm gonna be testing them out to different wedge distances, and then I'm gonna talk you through the results. I'm not gonna talk you through the results here because the roof is about to blow off. And welcome down to Formby Ladies Golf Club and it is a beautiful day here on the coastline. Not much wind, getting warmer. <laughs> it was absolutely freezing first thing. But now it's going to be the on-course portion of the wedge testing. So from different lies, different conditions, just actually seeing what these wedges are like in a real life situation. Because obviously on a range, you can't get a full grasp. So you need to be playing off different lies, bunkers, etc. And that's what today is going to be all about. By the end of this round, we're going to have a decision on which wedges are in the back. Before we get too deep into the on-course stuff, what happened at the range? So the results were actually very consistent over the short shots and the longer ones as well. So both the TaylorMade and the Ping produced more backspin. And it was pretty consistently over a thousand revs, especially on the short shot. Overall, I think the TaylorMade actually felt the softest. The Ping felt soft, but it was, I'm not going to say underwhelming, but I thought the feeling off the Ping would be a lot better than it actually was. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just not saying it was 
amazing. And that's for both the gap wedge and the lob wedge. Now the SM7, it was weird because that felt the firmest, but not in a bad way. It felt solid when you struck it. With the ping and with the tailor made, you could almost feel, you could almost sense the revs as you hit it. You could almost see how much it'd be spinning when it hit the green. Now with the Vokey, it wasn't quite that feeling. You could tell it was spinning. You could tell it was going to be good when it hit the green, but the actual distance control and the solidity Ooh. of that strike there's absolutely no doubt that that Vokey when hitting over both the 50 and the longer distances it just felt more solid it didn't feel like I'd get that one which spun up the face and didn't go the distance I wanted it to every strike felt good and this is one of the way ups I'm gonna have to make is it the fact that I want something which spins a lot that I'm not a hundred percent sure on distance control if I honed it I practiced it, I'd get used to or a club which probably doesn't spin as much but I can get more consistency as far as distance is concerned not sure Nearest pin, 120, par three. If we get a hole in one, those wedges are instantly going in the back. I mean. <laughs> Ripping them off the front of the green. <laughs> So this for me is the biggest strength of the Vokey. Not an amazing strike. You can see how much backspin it got though, compared to the other two, which pitched about the same and ripped off the front. More spin, more control. Tested on the range, tested on the course, and now I'm around the chipping area at Formby. I'm gonna give the wedges one more try out. I'm leaning towards the ping and maybe Ping and Vokey, I'd say I'm leaning towards at the moment. And then the, mo <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> so one of the most important things for me with a wedge, especially off a tight lie, is to be able to get that bounce working, to get it moving underneath. Now I'd probably say that this is Vokey. I think that's the best so far. You see, to be able to slide it underneath like that, that's so easy, but it has ran on a little bit. So is that one of the issues? there with the Vokey. Let me just try and land it a touch softer. Yeah, I mean, just be a... It's so nice to be able to slide it underneath like that. I mean, close behind on looks, but probably just edging it on feel and these mill grind too. I just feel I can stop it so much quicker with these around the green. but that's the one I don't like. Can I feel it rolling up the face a touch? I don't get that with the Vokey. Same with the Glide. Let's give this a go as well. Oh, this definitely get the most spin with these, I feel. In the simulator on the course, my gap wedge, again, I think the Vokey was a bit more solid. I feel like I could control the distance a little bit more, and yet I got more spin with the other two wedges. Yeah, and just distance control where I want to pitch it. Bang on. A bit more stop on that as well. Now, I can't... You know what? I'm going to rule the mill grind too. I'm ruling out. I'm ruling it out. Now, I know this probably doesn't say a lot, but I think it probably says a lot at the same time. The wedge I always pick up first, the Vokey. It's the one I'm almost trying to make fail. That probably says quite a lot. By the way, don't be concerned that around the green, it's almost a little bit of a lob wedge off. On the course, the gap wedges, they all perform really well. Like I said, the little grind in the ping span that little bit more. Now we're gonna hit off a down slope. Tight lie, down slope to a tight pin. It's just, honestly, it's so good. I'm that confident over the camera. Just look. As easy as you like. 
And for me, when choosing wedges, it's got to be, you've got to be able to use them in multiple situations and out of the rough on the course, off tight lies here, the maneuverability and the adaptability of the SM8 was just better. Felt a little bit firmer, or should I say more solid? No, it felt firmer and more solid. So if you're looking for the highest spinning wedge, it's not the Vokies, but I think if you're looking for a wedge which is more controllable and that you can trust out of all these different lies, then the SM8 is class, so good. Okay, on the drive home, fully decided, the SM8s are going in the bag. I think what I might do, depending on the irons that I choose, I might go from pitching wedge, so 48 degree, all the way up to 60, but that depends on the irons that I get as well, how good that pitching wedge is. Couple of things to clear up, the ball I was using was the TP5. The ball is gonna be up for grabs as well this year. And again, that will be going in one of the Build My Bag videos. But also a lot of questions about why I chose these particular wedges. I had to limit it really to a certain number because let's face it, all the major manufacturers do a wedge and I can't really be testing eight, nine, 10 wedges. I'd be forgetting what the hell I'm doing. So I had to limit it down to three. The Ping Glide I'd never tried before, so I was just really interested. The MG2, the Mill Grind 2, I tried previously, but the faces started to rust a little bit, so I wanted to try that out again. And the Vokies, you'd probably consider as the leader in the field. The things like the Callaways, the McDaddies, you think about the Cleveland wedges, you think about Mizuno wedges, which I really like as well. You know, it's a tough one, but the line's got to be drawn somewhere. But what I'm hoping to do with the rest of the Build My Bag series, let's say Callaway, obviously their wedges missed out in this. I'm gonna be testing them out in the putters and the driver, for example. So it's trying to find that balance between all the manufacturers. So everyone's gonna miss out in one area of the back. Does that make sense? So guys, get down into those comments below. Let me know what wedge you're gaming at the moment. Let me know what you think about this Build The Bag series. Is this type of review more useful than just a standalone review? Let me know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. Hit that bell icon while you're at it as well. Follow me on my other social media platforms as well. And guys, once more, we'll see you down here next time. SM8s. I'm also gonna get them stamped. I'm gonna get them stamped.